All right, so we're all fired up about NBA. The Heat last night, the Heat get off to a good start. I think you, I don't care it's a one-point win. You win, it's a good start. So the Heat want to know, and tomorrow they'll play on the road in Boston for the first time. Zach Harper joining us here. Let's get into some NBA with Zach. Of course, uh, everybody knows Cinephobe, which you can catch where, you know, he reviews all the movies that stink. Uh, you could also catch him Series X on NBA Radio. Mad Dog Radio. Is that a good sell job that I just did? He reviews all the movies that stink on Cinephobe. Is that a good sell? I think it's good because I think people start wondering, now what's a movie that stinks? You know, like they start, or my favorite movies, do they stink? Are they going to review them? I think that's, I think that's a perfect way to sell it. So, so what, what's, what's the next movie on Cinephobe? What are we doing? So we just had our 200th episode uh, drop today. Uh, a little bit of a film noir in which people um, we kind of hinted that we were going to do this movie um, that's really like not funny and it's really serious. It's like this serious, if you can believe it, it's like this serious Tyler Perry movie, Tyler Perry movie about like race and women and everything. Like it's really like, like really profound and dark and like deep, like not, not anything anybody could make funny. So it's been like this running thing that we were going to do this movie and then we surprise everybody. Mike Ryan barges in and we do Judge Dredd. The the first Judge Dredd or the new yeah. one? Yeah. No, no, no. The first one. Slice Stallone. Armand okay. Asante. Yeah. I am the law. I am the law. Yeah. Rob Schneider, terrible in that movie. Awful. Awful in that movie. <laughs> Diane Lane, surprisingly awful in that movie. I don't remember. Oh, was she the female cop? Yeah. I would not have remembered that. Yeah. Okay. And so so for Cinephobe, is it under 40% Rotten Tomatoes? Yeah, it's got to be uh, it's got to be forty percent or lower for either the audience or the critics. So it just has to be one of those. And I I actually think I think this one was the audience. I can't remember. I know we've had a couple recently that we recorded where the audience was the lower score. Did you enjoy it? Oh, I love that movie. I saw it in the theater as a kid. Me too. I've watched it many times since. Like that Demolition Man. Like these are like these are my childhood. These are what made me. Yeah, Demolition Man is it's a great movie and it's aggravating to me because I mean I have the same problem with Demolition Man that everyone else has, which I've lived my entire life and like I need to know what the three seashells are for. I I think if I had them in front of me, I could explain it. I think I've figured it out. <laughs> I've done a lot of internet research and like theories and Reddit. There's and probably everything. so many theories, There's a right? A lot of stuff out there. If you Google it, like that you'll spend a whole day researching it. Uh, what about stuff that's in the theaters now? Like, have you seen Killers of the Flower Moon yet? No, I was going to. And then I found out it's three and a half yep. hours long. And I'm like, all right, I need to know at what point. Like, I'm not like I'm going to have to pee at some point. Mm -hmm. I just am. Like, I And I just I need to know at what point in the movie it's OK to go do that. And then I come back and I got to make sure the theater, you know, the screen is kind of close to the the bathroom like i don't want to waste too much time there but like i really want to see it i want yep. to see it so badly but three and a half hours like scorsese what are you doing here I, I feel like he's he's almost trying to make a point because he's been right at the center of the whole marvel is not cinema stuff right right but but three and a half hours in cinema either like that's that's traffic school <laughs> like that's what that is i i haven't seen it yet either i i, I want to see it i'll see everything dicaprio's and he is my yeah. favorite but did did you? I mean, talk about three and a half hours. Did you see Oppenheimer? Like, did you see that in the theaters? No, I saw Barbie. I didn't see Oppenheimer. Uh, I like Barbie. Barbie was really good. But Oppenheimer, I have this weird like. I'm not a big Christopher Nolan fan. Really? Yeah, I think he's like not that good. I wow. I think a lot of his movies are poorly edited. I think there a lot of them are thirty to forty five minutes too long. Um, I do want to see Oppenheimer. I've heard it's brilliant. I know yeah, you're supposed like to see it in the lot. theater. But I like I'll I'll be good at home. Like I, that's fine for me. But I yeah like I, I I don't know. I think you know I think the Dark Knight is two movies poorly edited into one. I think the first half of the movie is really good. I think the sef second half sucks. And I think that's wow. how a lot of his movies go. Wow. Uh, so Tenet was horrible. Oh, Tenet's Tenet terrible. Tenet Tenet. I, you you cannot convince me that you understand Tenet. I I have no idea what that uh, movie's about. The first half is in terrible movie forward, and the second half is the movie in reverse. Like that's just it's what and like I was like Tenet sucked, and the, and this guy and I was like no, but do you understand this is what happened? I was like yeah, I get it. It just sucked. Like it no, wasn't I good. I don't understand. If someone <laughs> were to say it, you're like no, that's the problem. <laughs> I don't understand. I will say this: Inception though, love Inception. Yeah, that is a great movie yes. through and through. There, I no notes on that one. That's a what great about movie. Interstellar. Ugh, I 
I just didn't care by the end. Really? I honestly didn't care. Yeah, I just didn't care. Okay. I will, I've only seen it once. I'm willing to try it again. But when I watched, I was like, by the end, I was like, All right, let's just get out of here. The Prestige? Oh, no, I, I did not like The Prestige. I, I really? just saw, I saw I like, I don't, with a lot of movies, most movies, like, I never try to, like, figure out what's going on. I like to just experience it. But early on, The Prestige, I just, like, it clicked for me. I was like, oh, this is what the movie is. You and knew just, what the ending was going to be? I don't know for whatever reason. And it's not like, oh, I'm so smart. It just clicked for me. And I and, I, and then when it happened, I was like, yeah, all right. <laughs> like, it kind of ruined it for me. Wow. Yeah. I mean, if I, the first time I saw it, if I was able to think what the ending was going to be, I wouldn't have loved it either. And I wasn't even trying. It just popped in. Like, I, it, scary movies, anything, like, who's the kill? I never, I'm never like, oh, I think it's him. Like, I just tried to enjoy the ride, but it, yeah, for whatever reason, my brain turned on. Wow. All right. Well, you, you could hear all this type of conversation, although the movies we just ran through are not never on Cinephobe. Be on, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you can check out Cinephobe wherever you get your podcast from. What Going into last night, I mean, we had a, our first night of just a full slate of NBA action. What games were most intriguing to you going into last night? Um, I, you know, I was really looking forward to to Magic Rockets. Oddly enough, like two two young teams from last year. I think the uh, Magic are a playing team. I do too. I think the Magic are really good. Like the the Magic over the last, like they started out horribly last year, right? Yep. They were five and twenty, and then over the last fifty seven games, they were twenty nine and twenty eight. And they had the sixth best defense in the league. And that's a young team. So for a young team to play that defense, that extended period of the season, I was intrigued. I like a lot of the young players. Um, and so they didn't spend anything this offseason, right? They're like, we're going to roll with our guys. Houston, a, a bad young team last year, just a mess. Go out and get a new coach. They spent a 200 plus million dollars on Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet and Jock Landale and all these guys, right? And for Orlando just absolutely housed them last night yeah. i mean it was like it was never a game like they beat them down from the beginning super intrigued by that um i was intrigued to see how the pistons looked against the heat because I, that's another young team where Kate cunningham's really, really good he's good man like he was killer in the first half like he struggled in the second half i yeah. thought they made some good adjustments on him but yeah he's good um they you know he got a little lucky to to walk away with one there uh because i thought he got a good look at the end but um and, and then i and then you know obviously wemby like that that was the show last night. I wanted to see Wemby. I wanted to see what that looked like. And, you know, for a while it looked like it was going to be a little rough. And then, you know, he delivered enough in the fourth quarter for me. Like, he's he's the real deal. Are we skeptical of how much the Spurs are going to play him this year? Yeah, I think so. Because I think they realize, like, like this isn't 97, right? This isn't um, Tim Duncan joins David Robinson and this is a 20 plus win turnaround. Like, I think they realize like he's joining Keldon Johnson and Jeremy. So like, it's not, it's not the same situation, right? They're looking at this as 20 years. Like this is what we're going to do. So I think they are going to play him sparingly. I mean, they played him sparingly last night. Cause he made dumb fouls. He got into, mm -hmm. he got into foul trouble, made dumb fouls, looked like a rookie plenty of times last night. But yeah, like I think if he plays 62 games this year, I think it's a win. Like I really do. I like they're not try they're not winning this year. They're not a play in tournament team. Like they're none of that. Like I, I think you just need to make sure he is integrated into the NBA. He looks like he's comfortable and he's healthy. Are you into the play in tournament? I love it. I, I think the play in tournament is one of the best ideas the NBA's ever had. I was a little skeptical at first, uh, because it's like, all right, we already have more than half the league make the playoffs, right? Um, you know, that that that's a lot to add four more teams into the mix. Um, in both conferences, like I, you know, I don't know about that, but it has made the back end of each conference way more competitive. It's made the trade deadline way more active um, because teams think they have a shot. Teams say, and then you know, a team like the Lakers get into the conference finals last year. The Heat get into the NBA finals last year. No, I no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm talking the, 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 the in season tournament. Oh, I'm the sorry. in season tournament. I, oh. I said play in, Got but you. yeah, I, I meant oh. in season tournament. Oh. I don't get it. I don't get okay. it, man. Like I, I, like. All right, I'm not a big soccer guy, right? Like I don't really know soccer, so I get there. Like I've been told by soccer people that like, they're kind of trying to do this thing that happens yes. in in Europe, right? Yes. But what I understand for the soccer tournaments in Europe, you're getting all these teams from around the world, yeah. or for at least around Europe, that don't normally play each other. Correct. Then playing each other. We're just playing NBA teams. Yeah. Like, what's the di like? Did you know this the this thing starts in two weeks? Yeah, I actually looked it up yesterday. I'm like, I'm like, let me understand here. So it starts in a couple weeks, and then so I went to look at the Heat schedule. All right, so 
there must be like a lull of open dates because no. if they get to Vegas, right? And there is, there's like a nine day lull of when they won't be playing games if they don't advance. Right. So we'll just pack all those other games in at some point. Like, yeah, it's so dumb. Like I, maybe it works. Like the only, it just needs to work with like younger fans, right? If you get younger fans caring about it, and if you get a good like tournament or whatever in Vegas, like, all right, then you can start, you know, seeing the roots kind of form to where this becomes a thing. But like, man, I just like, I'm trying to be open-minded to it. I don't get it. I'm trying to be open-minded too, and I can't get excited about it. And I love soccer. For instance, Inter Miami, Messi, they won one of these tournaments, the League's Cup. And it was super exciting down here. We loved it. And I'm trying to say, why don't I care about the NBA's in-season tournament then when I care about the Heat and the NBA so much more than I do Inter Miami? Right. And, and so I don't know. Maybe it will be fun. Like I'm I think I'm gonna try to go to Vegas for it. I think I'm gonna try to cover it for those like three days or whatever. And maybe it'll be super fun and maybe it'll deliver and maybe players will care. Maybe that prize money for everybody is going to like invigorate everybody to like be about this. But I also just see teams like why are they going to care about this? Is Other the winning the team going to put up a banner? No, you can't put up a banner. I don't know. You can't. Look, I think one of the worst things you can do as a franchise is put up a division winner banner. Right. If you don't have other banners, right? Like I used to I I used to live in I mean, how hard do you laugh at the guy who shows up with your Miami Heat oh, Atlantic my. Division champion shirt? Why are you even <laughs> that has to be a giveaway at like a dealership. Like you can't, you can't or credit card giveaway or so you can't do that. Like you can't have those. But I, you know, I used to live in Minneapolis. I would cover games at the Target Center. I would walk in and you look up and it's like 2004 Northwest Division yeah, yeah, champs. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, God, I get it. That's Great, you were better than won, four other teams. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't we can't do that. Like that, no, you can't have a banner for that. Well, so how hard is the internet gonna bust on the team that holds up the in-season tournament trophy. Like, imagine the 76ers. Joel Embiid's never been out of the second round. He's going to hold. He's gonna raise the in-season well, tournament trophy? Now that's what I'm rooting for, right? Like, if it's, like, him or the Warriors and, like, Chris Paul raise it. Like, why yeah. would the Warriors care about this? Yeah. Why would they care about Like, it's so weird. But maybe, like, if you get, give them, like, like, what if they held up, like, suitcases of cash, right? Because they each win, like, a, like half a million dollars. Of, like, if you then hand them a suitcase of cash, because you're in Vegas, so you know they got it, um, then maybe maybe that's a good photo op. But no, that that trophy, you can't do that. What? Uh, let's talk about the heat here. Uh, I, uh, I'm happy with last night. I mean, they won. That's all I care mm-hmm. about. If, if they beat the Pistons by a point in January, I probably don't love that. But right. beating the Pistons by a point last night, I don't care. Just get the win. Uh, You know, I got tweets and texts about Kyle Lowry last night. It's like, I just want to be happy about the win. I I don't want to talk about Kyle Lowry last night. Obviously, I have to talk about it today. So I've been talking about it. I'm sorry. Like, one of the things that I liked about Kevin Love last night, he looked fresh. Mm -hmm. He looked much better than the guy that they got last year. And I feel like, all right, that makes a lot of sense. He's been off the last three months. I think we're going to get the best version of Kevin Love this year right now. That's what we got for arrested Kyle Lowry was 32 minutes, one field goal attempt, two assists. What are we doing? I mean, they, yeah, I look, I can't sugarcoat this thing. It's it. He looked bad, right? He looked, um, he looked slow, you know, like I, it, I don't know. Like, I think the hope is, you tread water with him. He makes good decisions. He plays enough minutes to, you know, to, you know, he'll have, he'll have some games. He, you know, he's still a threat to shoot and he's still a threat, even though he didn't shoot last night, like teams still respect him, right? They're like, Oh, that's Kyle Lowry. You know, I think, I think the scouting report looks at him differently than we do. So I do think there are some impacts that we don't see that other teams are like, that's Kyle Lowry. We can't leave him open. We got to do this. We got to do that. Right. So I think that exists, but at a certain point, you're just like, Jimmy's going to be the playmaker. Bam's going to be the playmaker. Tyler's going to be the play- playmaker. Maybe like Drew Smith or or Jaime comes in. Like maybe those are guys who can be playmakers. But I don't think you're looking at Lowry for anything other than like just play competent minutes. I do think he played competent minutes, but he didn't look good, if that makes sense. What did you make of what you saw from Jaime Jaquez? To me, uh, 
not that he's a star or anything, but he looks like an NBA player. He looks ready to play in the league. And I think he's one of those guys who it's going to be a pain in the ass for other teams to play against. I agree. And like, you, you got to think about it this way. Like he doesn't know what he's doing yet. Right. Like he doesn't know what he's doing at the NBA level, I should say. And he looked at least last night. Yeah. It's the Pistons, whatever, but he just looked comfortable. And like to, to me, when a rookie is in their first action, they look comfortable. Like I, you know, I, that's like what they shoot and turnovers and stuff. Like, I, I don't really care about that in early action for rookies. Like, I just want to see like, what is their demeanor? How do they look like they're overwhelmed out there? Do they look like the speed of the game is is where they want it to be. He just he looks super comfortable. You know, I actually had this interaction with uh, one of the most compulsive gamblers I've ever known. Oh, I don't even know the guy. Like I just sat next to him at a bar one day during the tournament and he was and he like was claiming to know Jaime, right? Like he's claiming to be like this UCLA booster and all this uh-huh. stuff or whatever as he's like literally sweating out are the angels and twins going to go over five and a half <laughs> runs in the first four innings? Cause he put like this and he's like, yeah, I lost like two grand on Marlins Braves last weekend. So I'm trying to make it like, it was just the most chaotic betting that I've ever experienced in a couple of hours. And I'm just like, like he's got, he literally had a, like a, like the horse, like the, the racetrack book out. He's circling like, like it was the fifties. Like it was mm-hmm. just so crazy, but he was talking up Jaime like crazy and like i'd watched him play at ucla a little, a little bit but i was like yeah, yeah yeah whatever and then the next game i watched everything this dude said it was like i saw it right like i like i was looking at him in a high in a different way and i just like you really do see that like that comfort that he has on the court you doesn't seem like you can speed him up and rattle him and if that's how he is you know through most of his rookie season what a like what a great play yeah what uh, what do you make of of the Heat's entire mo essentially going into this season about running it back? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm one of the few like national guys who like, yeah, the Heat are good, like they're good. Like this whole notion that you know the regular season doesn't matter because they were the eight seed and they went to the finals. Like, no, that's crap. Like the Heat weren't bad last year because they didn't take the regular season seriously. Like they didn't make shots. They didn't play good offense, but their defense was good. And it's not like they sat a bunch of guys. Like this is a good team. And this, I think it's a team that like, if they played Boston in the playoffs, like I think they beat Boston. I don't know if they beat Milwaukee, but like, yeah, I think they beat Boston. Like, I think this is a team that is as dangerous as just about anybody. And so you have to wait and see like who are going to be the fines, right? Like who are going to be those diamonds that they uncovered? Maybe that's Highsmith. Maybe that's, um, you know, Jamal Kane, like maybe it's one of those guys. Maybe Jovich like can play. I, I'm big on Orlando Robinson. I like what I saw in Summer League from him. So I think he's a guy that can get in the mix at a some, certain point. But the, yeah, this is a good team that made the finals. Like, all right, they lost Struess and lost Vincent. They can find those guys. What uh what'd you make of Boston last night? You know, when they when they made the Porzingis trade, uh I, I didn't think it made them better. But once they traded for Holiday. Uh, then I was like, yeah, I, 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 now I like both trades in a vacuum. I didn't love Porzingis trade, but now adding holiday, I think they're significantly better than they were last year. Um, I think the, I think where I would disagree with significantly better, like their top six is as good as anybody, right? Like they don't really have any depth after that. And, and so it's not like they have guys that are foolproof when it comes to health like Porzingis is yep. not a healthy guy year in and year out so like yeah if he's out there we saw last night he killed the Knicks last night he like like he had a monster fourth quarter he put them away like he like he was great last night but if he's brittle in the playoffs if you know you're, you're relying on Al Horford at 37 years old like there's there are just some questions I have about their depth and I don't think they're going to be able to rebound with a team like Milwaukee um when you get to the playoffs but uh but yeah I mean their top six is better than anything anybody else can put out there. I just worry about their their depth. Do you like the new flopping rule? I've been calling for this for years. You saw it last night. Porzingis got the first one ever. I very strongly believe this will get rid of flopping. Yeah, if they keep with it. They're, they're, there's a rule change every year, and they're like the first month or two, they're like, yeah, we fixed it, and then they stop calling it. Like, remember when you couldn't, like, jump into defenders? Remember when you couldn't yell at the refs? Remember when you couldn't flop? They had flop warnings and, and you know, fines and everything. Like, they do this every year where it's like, hey, we're going to emphasize this. You can't do this anymore. And then by January, they're not calling it. So, like, yeah, if they stick with it, I think it's a great way to fix flopping. Flopping is is so corny. 
as a <laughs> as like a as a you know a, a method of defense or trying to you know one up someone or gamesmanship like it's so corny um it's obviously prevalent in sports everywhere but yeah like i hope they stick with it because i do think it will deter it i'm just i gotta i gotta see it called in march when you think of flopping who is the first player that you think of he's the guy that brought it to the nba because for me i have a guy oh the first guy that brought it to the nba like the guy you think of you started this bullshit vladi yep vladi that's the guy vladi's the guy that's the guy because vladi was a master at it too man Mm -hmm. like he was like this it was art. It was art when Vladdy did it. Like I, you know, I grew up in Sacramento. So when he went to the Kings and everything, like it, it was, he was so brilliant at it, especially against Shaq. Like he was so those Kings Lakers matchups, like Vladdy just, man, it was yep. like watching DiCaprio. Like he just knew what he was doing. That's the guy. Yeah. Uh, Zach, tell everybody how they could catch you on all the different platforms and things you got going on. Oh man. Check out, uh, check out the bounce. It's a free newsletter every morning from myself and Shams Trania on the athletic. It's the athletic.com slash the bounce. If you're already subscribed to the athletic, you just go into your email preferences and you click it for the bounce. Uh, we do a really good job. I'm really proud of it. Uh, make sure you check it out. The athletic, make sure you're checking out uh cinephobe, wherever you get podcasts, NBA radio, mad dog sports radio at talk hoops on all socials. Awesome. Thank you, Zach. I always enjoy having you on. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it, Zach. Thanks.